Ladies and gentlemen, how are you all doing? This is Con Ulrich coming to you with another episode of Company Heroes 2 Fight Night. Of course, down here we see a name that we've seen many times before. This is the Wehrmacht Forces of Fortune, and up here in the north. We see another name that if you are aware of the scene, you tend to see this guy every now and again. This is I-I-P-L-I-I, Captain S. Price. Apparently a COD fan if you've ever seen one. We're going to see an ultra-early infantry company going down, as well as an ultra-early special rifle command. And I'm wondering why you might say, see that. Well, that's because we do see a Bolton down here for point and click. So we're going to see some sniper play on this map. <coughs> Which is going to be quite an annoying thing for Fortune, let me tell you. We are also going to see that Captain Price has already locked in shock rifle frontline tactics. So be prepared to see both the anti-tank gun, as well as that IS-2 and the KV-8. If you guys have checked into the one game of my own that I've posted, uh, my opponent definitely went for something like that. And it was quite an annoying thing, let me tell you. Um, I will say in the meantime, though, looking uh, while we were waiting for the, some of the action to kind of kick off, we do see two squads of Grenadiers coming out to just that scout sniper. And, ah, there we go, another combat engineer. Um, so we see Fortune running with Assault Support Doctrine, which is something you don't see very often, I must say. Um, Mechanized Assault Doctrine with a Stroke Easy, as well as that Tiger Tank. And the German Infantry Doctrine with the Austrian uh, Relief Infantry, which I uh, I think I've heard that it's going to get a nerf in the upcoming patch or two. Um, but let's get back to the game right now. We do see that both players right now are pretty much going for a mirror kind of cap strategy, taking up that strategic point and then moving towards the fuel from either side. Um, and we're going to see now a slight deviation with the Grenadiers taking over that church and hopping right back out the next second. And I can't help but wonder, are they just going to try to find and take an early, early... I don't know, wait, nope, never mind, it's not going to happen. Is that trailing guy going to get picked off by a shot? No, he's not. He's gonna, actually going to make it ju out just in time. But these Grenadiers are now going to find these scout snipers. And guys, I don't know if that's a really great option. Vizili Zaitsev is running his way back to base. Almost dropping a model, and those guys are not cheap, let me tell you. Um, and I don't think he's even rushed out those medics. No, he is not. Excuse me. Wow. We are going to see instead of conscripts coming out. And instead, honestly, of being able to kind of appreciate that fuel, uh, that early scout sniper has forced him instead to actually drop his strategic point, which puts him out of fuel support range. Now... These uh, Grenadiers, I'm going to fall back to this house. You see two guys just like chilling over here. But we're going to see another squad of Grenadiers coming here on the flank of Captain Price. And we're going to see these own combat engineers probably booking it pretty quickly. The scout sniper as well is kind of is right back into the fight though. And it's a very, very brave Grenadier squad. who's just kind of staying here, kind of laying down fire. Uh, actually, both of them, good lord. Um, actually, kind of concerned right now for that Grenadier squad. He does back away just in time. Of course, he does. Fortune's a savvy player if I've ever seen one. I'm going to see over here to the western side, we're going to see that these uh, combat engineers are going to run forward against these Sturmpios. Excuse me, just rather straight Pios. I always call them Sturmpios. All pioneers in my mind are Sturms. Uh, and that's probably not a good idea when you have a bolt-action rifle against those MP40s. And that's definitely proven right now with the pioneers barely taking any health damage and the Soviets, on the other hand, taking about 40, you know, 60% of their health. Even more disturbing is now they've been chased out of their house. Well, this Grenadier squad kind of chilling over here in the meantime. Even with the scout snipers, uh, Fortune's time to time to book it, bro. Time to book it. Let's boogie. So he does, but he does back it up. Uh, so we are going to see a lot of, of reinforcement coming out for these troops, uh, but we're also going to see a tech up to uh, escalate battle phase one. And I can't help but wonder: will that mean that he's going to get a half track to kind of chase things down? We we'll just go for the two 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 to uh, fight off these scout snipers. Uh, though we do finally see the. Uh, Field medics coming out, those lovely Soviet ladies. Uh, but even more disconcerting... Um, disconcerting, though, is to see that these Grenadiers have now just been chased out of their the Holy House. And I can't help but wonder who's going to be hopping back in and out just so that we can kind of frustrate... Oof! To frustrate uh, those Grenadiers and just keep them in range of those scout snipers. Where are those noble, noble troops? Well, we are going to see another squad of Grenadiers has been forced back, and I don't know, is this an old squad? Yeah, apparently, no, this is just, uh, unfortunately, some very, very poor prisoners who did not make it back home to see their mothers. We're also going to see that these conscripts down here are going to cut off the German fuel now, so what once has been done to him, now he does it back in return. We're also going to see, though, at the same time, to the Lichter Mechanized Company coming out, but it's going to be quite a bit of time until we see that 222. Of course, 15 fuel, at current fuel consumption rates, it's going to be, oof. Four minutes? Three minutes? My math is not always so great. Um, and right now, we just see just what seems to be the opening moves in a very, very interesting game. 
the concepts are trying to take away this fuel point, and we're going to see these grenadiers kind of move up to disabuse them of that notion, but I'm not sure they can get inside the, the point until it's too late. No, they do. They make it in just barely in time. Do we see any kind of anything coming off from them? A rifle grenade, perhaps? Might be a good option. No? Don't necessarily want to spend that? Uh, nope, no, we do. There, we, there it goes right there. So while we have the scout snipers moving over here to kind of support that Soviet group, uh, yikes. Yikes, both guys make it out just barely, so we're probably going to see a push to get that 222 back onto the field. So in about a second and a half, are we going to see it? No, apparently not yet, we aren't. Hmm, okay, never mind, there we go. It's a couple seconds too late, he was just too, a little bit too busy microwing on the other side of the map. Uh, we are going to see again, though, that these, <laughs> these combat engineers, man, just not having a good day. They, they run forward, immediately get chased off again, and, you know, uh, I will say Captain Price does immediately pick up the correct response to a rushed 222, and that will be a Zisk gun, uh, maybe not a rushed 222, but a very, very quick 222, and the correct response is, in fact, that Zisk gun is going to come up just in time to keep those scout snipers safe and be quite an issue for that early... Uh, light vehicle. There is a slight resource disparity between the two players. Captain Price has managed to have a couple more things uh, in supply than does our German player, but that's not to say that anything is really too far out of the game for either bro. Like we are going to see here, this 222 is going to come right behind this fire, uh, this fire powered, this flamethrower um, combat engineers. And he's not just going to strafe back the entire direction. He's got to watch out, though, because he's going to show his rear armor, such as it is, <coughs> to that onrushing Zisk gun. And I'm sure at this point, yes, he has. Uh, Captain Price has already gotten those anti-tank grenades. Um, so one unlucky positioning, and he's quite, quite a massive hit. But until then, these, these scout snipers are going to come out and take fire immediately. Unluckily for him, though, this is going to be the anti-tank grenade, and here comes that Zisk gun. And so he's going to try to book it out as soon as possible. It's not going to be just enough. Um, he's going to get chased out pretty quickly. If he makes it out at all, which is, in my mind, very unlikely. <coughs> oh, man, it's unfortunate there's a drop. Even as we see another 222 come in, here's that last shot. Oh, no, it's a destroyed engine, though. So the 222 is actually not even out of the game, necessarily. It's sort of out of the game. Be interesting to see whether or not if either player does make a push. Nope, we see the 222 gets blown up by Fortune's second 222. But like I said, now now with that, that Zisk gun on the field, there's a lot more issues for Fortune to deal with. He does pick on very quickly on that conscript squad, picks up two models rather quickly. Uh, but with the shock troops moving forward, it might be better for him to kind of back it up soon because those PPSs are going to wreck him. Trust me, I would know. This is unupgraded. Um, troops. We are going to see a uh, water coming out for Fortune as Price does kind of shift over here to his, his attention here to the south. And I'm kind of wondering if these pioneers shouldn't just slide in behind these combat engineers. And that's what's exactly what's going to happen right now. But good to know, news for both players is that the uh, resources have pretty much evened out. We actually only have one manpower difference at all. And right now, even though these combat engineers are going to slide into this house, for a little bit of protection, that may not be enough. It might get forced away just a minute or two. Or even worse, might even see this this garrison slowly start to perish. But it seems instead that this gun is the you know holy firepower from on high, and it's going to destroy that 222. So now Fortune's making a third 222. I'm not sure if I necessarily agree with that, um, especially with and actually I'm not even sure I agree with having this mortar squad where it is. Wow. And the mortar squad doesn't really get time to take anything other than, you know, a setup crew for like half a second, and then they immediately get picked off. But let's think about what Fortune can do to get back into this. Um, I'm kind of wondering if it might not be a better idea for him to actually invest in a sniper of his own. Yes, that scout sniper squad is rather a frustrating and beastly thing. But he's got the manpower, he's got the time to deal with it for a while as well, and he has now picked up this mortar again, so maybe what he should do is just suck her in, that scout sniper and just try to ambush it a little bit, you know? Very very much an a la enemy at the gates kind of idea. We are going to see with the western side, though, these combat engineers are going to pick up the German victory point, and they're also going to try to pick up this middle VP as well, which is probably good since Fortune is up quite a bit. 
<laughs> and it's just going to be quite frustrated by um, the positioning of this 222. Ooh, and there's a two squad vet, a two star vet of concepts does go down. Um, and these shock troops might drop another model as well. Will they go down? Maybe not quite. Maybe drop another model. Maybe actually nothing at all. Good lord, I, I was completely wrong on that one. That, of course, never happens. Haha. <laughs> Uh, but we are going to see a single cap in the favor of Captain Price. He's going to take off a couple of tickets before uh, the Germans do take things right back into positioning. And we're going to see this, this drain continue for Captain Price. He's been playing, honestly, not out of his mind, but de definitely a very interesting adaptation to the usual Wehrmacht Soviet um, early game. That scout sniper is really paying for itself. Let me take a quick look at how many kills does that thing have. Not, you know, a beastly amount, of course, but he's death being quite an issue for the German forces. 14 kills, almost to a second star of veteran Sieg. I can never... Also, it was a rate of fire, okay, and further rate of fire. So, with a Bolton already kind of supporting his forces, that rate of fire might be actually quite a bit more devastating if allowed to continue picking up veterancy. Now, this mortar's in an excellent position though, at the same time. This scout sniper, unless he approaches from the side, either way, which will expose him to unnecessary risk, he is in a great position, hiding behind the wall. Maybe a little bit less than, you know, utterly manly, but, you know, in war, who cares about being manly? Just, it, it only matters if you stay alive, right? And uh, we're going to see combat engineers over slide over here to the southern part where the scout sniper squad was before. We see those guys actually rotate back to the center. And I can't help but wonder if there's just a one unlucky mortar hit could just devastate that scout sniper. As he being walked forward to that barrage is just kind of coming in ever so slowly. And actually, interesting enough, we do see the penal troops are coming in. A penal battalion, um, not something you see very often, but these guys at the same time, to kind of refresh your guys' memory, they have access both to a flamethrower as well to a satchel charge, um, which might be an excellent option to use on this house right here. Uh, but it does seem that in the meantime, they don't really need the house to be really taken out. It's just a magnet for um, German troops and they're just going to take get hammered the more and more that they go in. We're also going to see that these drone pilots are going to do their best to kind of fight off this, this guard squad, but it's not going to go very well. We're going to see these, this 222 rotate around instead. And is this a German mine right here? Yes, there's a Teller mine kind of chilling right there. Uh, and these guards are going to get forced off in just a second, I'm sure. They're going to back it out. Because right now, I'm going to have to do great for them to worry about that. Maybe. Maybe not. Ah, but an MG42 has finally come out for Fortune, so he's just going to suppress the ever-living bejesus out of this squad. Once he can actually see them again. But they drop, they drop three models in quick succession, just bam, bam, bam. And it's not even like a, you know, wham, bam, thank you, man. It's more just like a, ow, everything dies immediately. But Scout Sniper now is being brought up to kind of deal with that machine gun, as well as a flamethrower, and it might be time for this machine gun to book it. I already dropped a model. Uh, Gunner probably drop another one before, before it gets out. Um, down to very, very low health. He's got to go now if he's going at all. And it might be just, it's too late. He just drops two models. And that was an excellent combined arms approach by Captain Price to deal with that machine gun. We're going to see the center part of the map is fairly controlled by Captain Price. Um, proving that even if you die in a game, doesn't mean you have to die in real life. Although if you die in a game, well, that, that's actually an extremely foolish observation to make. Let's focus on something, something a little bit more intelligent, shall we? Captain Price has been just dominating the center part of this map. It has been German a few times, but every single time that it is, those scout snipers move right back in and start picking on those German troops. With the addition of that penal battalion um, flamethrower, and here comes the, the stroke easy to kind of shatter the immediate prospects of the penal battalion, takes out four guys ultra quickly. And all those are going to be an anti-tank grenade coming out, maybe? No, no there's not. Instead, it's going to be the stroke easy just firing on these conscripts just force them back. And a second one gets called in immediately, too. So right now, there is just not enough AT, in my mind, for Captain Price to deal with this. There is that uh, Zis gun. I cannot tell you for the life of me where the thing immediately is. No. Is it a little bit further back? It is way too far back for my liking. Where is that Zis gun? There we go. Yes, it is way the heck back here. So this 222 can kind of run in spot for the two Stugs. And with the lack of an ability to really maneuver too much, they might lose one Stug out of this, but oh no, this gun goes down like ultra quickly. Brutal, brutal hit. And for some reason, the guards decided to kind of launch their attack 
Ay, ay, ay. This is a brutal, brutal moment or two for Captain Price. Ouch. Brutal. So Captain Price just dropped something like 10 models right there. You do see this unfortunate Soviet graveyard. And we do see the Stokes are trying to also take out this uh, Zisk gun, so that way it cannot be used again against them. It must be quite a long time before that happens. And maybe it might be a better option to actually try to pick it up and then run. I don't know. Maybe. We're going to see the scout snipers are coming up over here. Trying to pick on these guys just a little bit. And we'll do it rather successfully. And we're also going to notice that there's a tank of recon battalion command coming down. So it's an SU-76 is already in play. And I'm sorry for not checking on the tech levels. Um, no, Fortune is still on tech level 1. <clears throat> and there we go. We do see that Zisk gun get picked up by Fortune. Now, he is going to be probably picked up pretty quickly by the sniper as well. So he might lose the Zisk gun to the sniper. But no, he seems to make it back just in time. And that, was, that those snipers cannot really move forward for fear of both the Zisk gun... Of, oh, so not the Ziskon, excuse me, for the 222, as well as that Stug. So Fortune's going to immediately kind of get away, and we're actually going to see a lot of interest, a very interesting play of this 222 firing through the hedge. <laughs> and drawing a satchel charge, in fact, which is going to allow him to start wailing on this machine gun emplacement from the side. Oh no, he's just going to dive into the base! There's an interesting play. The SU-76 says, hey bro, come at me, man. And, and the 222 wisely decides to back away, not so much slowly, but just back away at least, which is a very, very important thing. Which then, of course, does allow this SU-76 to push away the stroke E. But the damage has been done. 400 to 354, 17 minutes into this game. Captain Price is down about 10 army supply, and a lot of that's really thanks to that massive armored push that happened about 2-3 minutes ago. Uh, but that's not that's not to say obviously that things are over just yet. We do see this massive infantry push from the from the um, who what are they called? Let's just say Soviet infantry. And the SU-76 at the same time has not picked up its first kill. The 222 is now a smoldering wreck in the middle of the map. But it may pay for being so brutally good at its job. So the crew's been stunned. There's a, I can never remember which one that is. Oh no, the loader's been injured. Even worse. Um, and while anti-tank grenades are coming out hot and heavy, we are going to see that the SU-76 is just getting pushed back further and further. Despite being washed in flame and bathed by just random shots left, right, and center, Captain Price is forced to move away. Ah, uh, and even more interesting, the stroke has now got its armored skirts, so it's been upgunned quite a bit with a wee bit more armor, but it does not seem to work as much. Instead, it does. we are going to see that the main gun's been destroyed. Oh, wow. Main gun's been destroyed, so Fortune had a very, very great opportunity there, and he's actually unfortunately gets dropped again instead. What that Zisk gun? Where's the Zisk gun now? Where is that Zis? It is not there. It's it's right there. So for if that SU-76 had come any closer, he would have regretted it. And a second SU-76 is going to come out for Captain Price. Not the position I would definitely would have taken if I would have tried to tech up a little bit further, but. Um, can't really argue with results right now like that one. That SU-76 was definitely was holding things down quite a bit. Actually, I kind of wonder, it would not have been a good idea to actually go for the KV-8. Given, of course, the fuel right now would put him out of line for the moment, he would not have been able to quite be ready to enjoy the KV-8 immediately, but just to save up for it. Um, it does see that those, those base M HMGs are just way too far to actually... Not, not, excuse me, not too far enough, rather, to actually put fire on those German forces. And the Stug E's for some reason deciding to set tanks at 20 paces or, you know, a assault gun at 20 paces and just start laying in to those conscripts, which are going to be able to at least decap the center part of this map, if nothing else. Now, here comes that second SU-76, and with that happening, there's a big armored push coming out from the Soviets, in fact. And this, this gun might have to watch out because, yes, he's diving pretty deep. Diving pretty deep. I am surprised to see there's not been an anti-tank or anti-tank rifle grenade or something like that. And even more surprised to think that this this scout snipers are actually still in play. Uh, but in the meantime, what is going on? We do see the Stug over here actually taking fire. He's hunkered behind that wall and you know just I would say puts a a very very definitive statement on that. Uh, couple of squads of infantry, although he does pay for it himself. 
Oh wow, and it's quite a grenadier because get dropped as well by those flamethrowers. Uh, so what we're going to see the Soviets kind of moving forward. We are not going to see them moving too successfully, and we're going to see this, these scout snipers instead. 27 kills, almost a three-star veterancy. Start pushing things back, and we're just going to see Fortune continue to spam out those Stugs. And I can't help but wonder if maybe, again, for him too, yes, it'd be quite a while for that tank, uh, the Tiger tank, that is. But maybe, you know, teching up, do something like that. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's the new meta right now. Maybe what the meta is, is to uh, just kind of, if you have a, a the call-in commander, oof! That scout snipers are taken down in two swift shots from a marauding Stug that gains veterancy off of that. Uh, which is going to be definitely hurting Captain Price. Those scout snipers are keeping him very much in this game. Um, but getting back to what I was saying, Fortune might be playing a, a kind of a new commander meta. If you have call-ins, they kind of just depend on the call-ins as opposed to investing in um, the, not the tech choices, but, uh, you know, teching up. Ooh, and the loader's load is wounded again. Are we going to see another shot coming out? Ooh, yes, so one of them does fall, and that is going to hurt Captain Price as well. He's down about 20 army supply right now, too. And with all three points going to be slowly going over to the Germans, 375 to 319, uh, Captain Price is going to get himself a little bit of, a, of an attack together. Unfortunately, quite a bit away from both the IS-2 and the KV-8. And with the addition of that second Stug, uh, which both of them really, frankly, need to be repaired quite a bit, um, and that's just going to kind of cover things. I'm not sure why he's not really kind of deciding to go for maybe some barrages. Might be an interesting idea. Um, but instead of that, outside of that, yeah, Captain Price is in a very dire position. Let's take a look at the map real quick. We see him shoving right back in the center part of the map. So falling prey to Beehive Company of Heroes too. Yes, there are some things that are very good about that, uh, that approach if you have the forces to support it. But unfortunately, he does not. <coughs> We see another squad drop from him at the same time, too. Fortune just kind of continues to expand his lead. And we see some Panzer Grenadiers coming out into the field in just a second or two. Um, and a second, and was it a third or a fourth SU-76 coming out? I cannot recall, but unfortunately for the, the captain, it is way too many. We are going to see the use of that barrage, a very effective um, and rather, in my mind, underused skill. Um, if memory serves, yes, it's completely and totally free which is even better for a Soviet player that who's on the budget. And we're also going to see actually a mechanized assault group coming out. Um, and those guys can be upgraded with Shreks. So it's going to see double Shreks coming out on one squad of Volksgrenadiers, uh, Panzer Grenadiers, excuse me. And I can't but wonder if that's going to happen again on the other one as well. 120, so not quite to yet. Maybe another minute or two to get those. But with that happening, we see a Marauding Death Squad. I guess these SU-76s, and you know, a couple of shots, it's going to put those guys down pretty low in terms of health. And that would be quite a devastating combination for them. We're going to see the uh, Zisk gun being backed away. They're pushing this way just out of that barrage positioning, which is probably a good plan. Um, and with these Panzer Gunners moving up with their MP40, so are those STG, STG 44s? I actually can never remember. Those, those are STG 44s. So the STGs, yeah, it's a good idea for these combat engineers to book it way the heck out of there. Um, and luckily for Captain Price, these current troops do not actually have those Panzer Shreks. Um, if they did, that'd be quite a devastating thing for them, I'm sure. And now we're under, like I said before, a trip cap coming out, as well as that strategic point has been capped, and all oh, decapped, and now being capped by Fortune. And I'm kind of wondering, is he going to call in a third stroke for the map? Or is he just going to start saving up for that Tiger tank? Because I feel like the Tiger's going to be the nail in the coffin. With him picking up that strategic point, he does book it out of there. And with the stroke ease right there at the same time, too, these SU-76s have to be very, very nervous. They're very, very careful about what they do. They are going to take some shots. But instead, you are going to see it just, you know, exchanging shot after shot after shot. And although these concepts are going to come in and probably pick on and maybe even take out the Zisk gun, Oh, never mind. There we go. He's barely able to make it safe. But backing up just a little bit might be a good idea, too. See, there's another conscript squad. Barely just make it out. And this main gun on this SU-76 is gone. Which makes the makes it be quite a, a tough battle. The SU-76 right now still in play. But we are going to see at least this... What you call it? The Zis does get taken out. The Zis, this Zis is going to get taken out. But we're also going to 
Take up a clown car assault instead. So you take out one SU-76, and even if this machine, this machine Gevere, even if this half track does go out, you guys get taken out. It's gonna be more than enough and more than justified, I'm sure, to see this trade. Even better when neither Panzer track is now usable by the opponent. Ah, wow, 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 wow. But looking at the uh, map again for a second here, guys, let's just take a look at this. Of course, like I said before, things are rather blue. <sighs> Quite a bit. Um, forgive me, guys, I have to take a quick break to handle something real quick. I know for you, no time has passed at all, but for me, it's been several minutes. So give me a second to kind of get right back into the sight of this game. We are going to see, of course, that these Stugs are covering the uncruised this gun. Kind of an interesting uh, idea, especially when you have these kind of marauding conscript squads moving forward to the AT guns. But the usage of this uh, MG42 right here, even with the scout snipers around, is going to be more than enough to kind of keep the Soviet forces back. And now with those scout snipers kind of found out, yes, we are going to see a charging Stug. Try to just start picking on these uh, conscripts again, these guards again, excuse me, and an SU-76 bravely just looking to stem the tide. Forcing him back, of course, uh, but with, oof, with that target weak point, we do see the loader himself has been wounded rather severely. <laughs> the other stroke kind of moves in at the same time, too, so with the Ziskun right here, it may be a very bizarre choice to sacrifice a Stug in exchange for a um, wounded SU-76, but hey, if that's what he wants to do, then that's what he's gonna do, Pilgrim. Oh no, he's gonna call down the, that arty barrage. Oh, ugh. harsh, 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 harsh. Trading out this Stug even for this um, Vet 2 SU-76, I guess in his mind, as long as he can continue to be able to call in um, that those uh, Stugs, which he can he can afford to do it quite a bit, and though he actually has can wait just a couple more minutes for that Tiger, he'd be in pretty good shape. I'm kind of interesting just now, I'm not sure if you guys saw that, but looked at the flame that's actually coming out of the Zisco. It's a very, very interesting kind of um, uh, sprite opportunity. Is that what you want to call it, perhaps? Same time, too, we're actually going to see these concepts getting bushwhacked by these Panzer Grand that's at the base. And we're going to see um, this uh, Zisk gun also just kind of laying on some firepower as well. Uh, but he might actually drop the these Panzer Grands in the meantime. The guy's getting chased off by the weight of fire. Just barely making out pixel of health either way. Um, and while that Scout Sniper squad has not been, you know, completely slain, he has been wounded, but enough that he's not going to make it out at any time soon. But neither is this Stug. He's going to get wailed on by that new Ziska being brought onto the map. 29 minutes into the game, 374 to 132. And with those... Sm is that smoke barrage coming out from this mortar? Because honestly, you don't see that very often. Uh, well, how is that mortar doing anyway? Five kills, two starts of veteran C, just kind of laying down a lot of long-range attacks. Not really necessarily changing the way the game works. That kind of goes more to squads like this with their LMGs. Um, and this squad of guards might get picked off. Maybe the Grens as well. No, nobody goes down again. And honestly, I'm surprised by how lucky these guys have been in terms of RNG recently. Um, there is one squad of conscripts right back at the Soviet base and Price's base. Um, wherein they are just chased away. Oof, and that was an unlucky hit right there. That guy just evaporates. And with the addition of a some sort of incendiary grenade, he does go down and they just looks like he exploded. Like he just spontaneously combusted. So the poor guy right there. Even more poor is the fact that the scout sniper is now going right into here. And with the Ziscon being taken out, he's got nothing to really back him up. So he's got to back away rather quickly. Wisely backs away. So the SU-76 is on the field, so is the T-70. But in just a second, we're going to see that monster of a tank coming out from the for from Fortune, and that's what it is. He's going to tell your fortune right now. He's reading your palm, and guys, it does not look too wonderful for the Soviets. And just that mortar is just, you know, it's practically just picking its shots. It's just dropping stuff down on top of them, and just brutally so. And there goes this gun, and there goes the captured this gun. So you know, losses either direction. <coughs> With that tire coming on the field, I imagine we see a tap out from Captain Price rather quickly. Any second now. 
even with these pentagrams going down, um, there's not a whole lot he can do at this point. Um, his... He can be completely and totally... I won't say outfought, but overpowered. Oof. So both AT you know, armor-piercing rounds coming out from the MG42, which is an ability you don't, just, you don't see enough of. As well as that Tiger tank, uh, we already see the Soviets drop into 100 points, and Captain Price does realize the writing on the wall with less than half of his opponent's numbers. It's time for him to kind of hang it up, and he does so with a little bit of panache. So well done to Fortune, well done to Captain Price, because that honestly was a much closer game than the map might suggest. Um, I will say that Captain Price might have missed an opportunity or two to kind of slide around the outside, to kind of flank as so much, like I keep saying. And we are so much conditioned to kind of attack back right where the enemy is instead of just sliding away instead. Um, but thank you guys so much for tuning into this particular game. Thank you, Fortune. Thank you, Captain Price. Both of you guys for playing such an excellent game that we can kind of learn from. Um, and guys, if you have a game you want me to check out, let me know. Email me. Uh, message me. Something me. I am on Reddit rather often, and I post my stuff every day. So let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you want me to check out. But for the time being, that will be it for this fight night. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Connor Works signing off. Take it easy, everybody.